What's up everybody, my name is Paladin, and today we are bringing you another champion reworked video. Today we are going to be taking a look at a champion who in my opinion has needed a rework for a very, very long time, and that champion is Gnosis. Now, the big thing with Gnosis, and a lot of people hate, is the fact that this champion feels and looks as if he can scale into eternity. He is able to scale with his Q in a side lane basically the entire game and as the game goes on and on the other team essentially has a ticking time bomb in that lane as to where if they do not either win the game or if they do not shut him down he will single-handedly win the game for the enemy team and that is or your team and that is in my opinion a little too strong so one of the things that I wanted to look forward to in this rework is changing the dynamic of Gnosis, making him more teamfight oriented. Because if you look at every other split pushing champion, whether it's Alawi, whether it's Garen, whether it's Trendemir, whether it's Yorick, they all have some form of niche that makes them strong. And without that niche, they are not nearly as strong. So with Yorick, it's his ultimate with his ghouls and his maiden. Um, yeah, I forgot even Master Yi. Master Yi with his Highlander up. Trendomir with his ultimate up. Gnosis has a very strong ultimate, but really, even without his ultimate, he is able to single-handedly win a game because of his Q stacking. And with, I don't know if Riot has noticed, but every time they've entered something in the game that has the ability to scale forever, aka Feral Flare back in like season four, it doesn't work out for the game's health. Nobody likes it and it becomes very, a very unhealthy playstyle for the opposing team to play against and borderline overpowered i should say over the borderline of overpowered so the, uh, so like i said the big thing that we want to do is change up his team fight ability making him more team fight oriented and i think you guys will see that with his kit okay so the first ability on our list is his passive which is uh, right now it's called Soul Eater. We're going to be changing it to a passive known as Shards of the Desert. So this is actually going to be a completely different ability. Um, this ability, Gnosis gathers mystical shards from taking objectives such as turrets, non-nexus non, um, non turrets, uh, dragons, baron, and rift herald. So every time he kills one of these, it's very similar to when you kill rift herald, how you get the eye of the rift or eye of the herald, where then you can summon uh, the herald, how it drops on the ground. You walk over it for about a second and a half and you pick it up. For Gnosis, every time he kills an objective or takes an objective, he will gain a shard. Now, he can collect 10 shards total, and each shard will give him 100 stacks on his Q damage as well as 125 bonus HP. Instead, basically, we're getting rid of the ability where he's going to last, last hit minions to gain damage on his Q. This way, he actually is going to be more team-oriented. Um, he can still split push a lot, obviously, if he gets two turrets in his lane, he's going to gain, you know, two shards, 200 stacks on his Q, and I would say, for a lot of people, this may be sort of, kind of gutting his abilities, because he's not going to have as much damage, he has to basically go around and grab objectives, but... If you think about it as a Gnosis player, if you go around and you're making yourself more objective heavy, you're going to gain more power. So if you're if you if you help your and you help your team get a Rift Herald, grab a dragon, get three turrets, you're already at five you know f f uh, five shards, which could be as early as you know 20 minutes in the game, which should make you a lot a lot stronger than you normally would at that point. But the main reason of doing this is to cap out his infinite scaling tactic that a lot of people have where they'll, they'll just keep stacking, you know, 40, 40, 50 minutes in the game and just continue to do that and not help their team. This will actually force Gnosis to, he has to group, he has to actually use his power to grab these shards. Um, I think it will make him more consistent with scaling, which may throw him into, you know, being played in higher elos as well. Okay, going into his second ability here, um, or actually his Q ability, which is known as Siphoning Strike. We're going to change the name to Spirit Strike. Uh, very similar ability, just with some added effects. So the first thing is we are removing the last hit stacking effect, which you have on minions. When you kill a minion, at, uh, you'll gain a stack or two stacks for your Q or however many stacks. Um, we updated it a little bit. Uh, so now, like I said before, you gain bonus damage based on how many passive stacks. On here, I had it 1 to 8. Uh, I changed it to 10. Um, the big reason why I wanted to 10 that way was kind of an even, um, you know, you gain 100 per stack at, you know, 
10, at 10 stacks, you'll have 1,000 Q damage, which I think is a good cap for his damage. Now, he has a bonus effect now where when he kills a minion with his Q proc, he will gain Soul Eater, which is his old passive. So he still has the ability to have that uh, sustainable lifesteal in his kit. He just has to kill minions now with it. He can't gain it from attacking champions or just auto-attacking. He has to Q and kill a minion. Um, also, the scaling, I would, I would have to adjust the ratio a little bit. I feel if he's able to get 1,000 stacks like that, the ratio should be lowered a little bit. That way he's not, you know, proccing 2,000 damage per hit on a squishy target, you know, one-shotting him. Maybe tone it down a little bit. I don't know if any of you guys have any idea what a good ratio would be for it. Let me know. But the key point of, of, of this ability is, like I said, removing the boring stacking mechanic, making him more uh, just focused on getting CS as well as, you know, uh, poking when he can. Uh, having the additional effect of his old passive Soul Eater gives him some sustain in lane uh, keeps him alive a little bit longer and I think it creates a more a better form of scaling for him just overall going into his W which is known as wither we'll just change the name to withered soul I just I just think it sounds cooler uh, like I said um, it's kind of the same thing as the Q very similar effect just with some added uh, bonuses in there same slow uh, maybe slightly decreased in ratio so maybe instead of starting at 90% it'd probably start at well, I, I think the max would be 80%. However, this ability now scales with his shards, if you guys can see here. So slow becomes more scale-driven based off sh shard collection. So if he has one or two shards, his slow may start at 50%. Once you, once you max it out, it will probably go up to that 80 and 90% again. However, I did add another effect in there. Whenever you queue a target who has, who has been withered, you actually will consume the slow and you'll grant that remaining percentage as movement speed for like a second or two. This way, one of the biggest issues with Gnosis I feel is that he is, if you get close to him, he is unkiteable. If, if you don't have flash, even if you have flash, if he has flash, <laughs> you're not getting away from him. You need an ability to, um, you know, jump over a wall like Camille or go invisible or CC him and then run away. He is very hard to get away from once you've got next to him. And then when, once he's overpowered, it feels, it's like, okay, well, you're dead. You can't really do anything else about it. This way, whenever he consume, whenever he, this way he can't constantly just queue you over and over again until you die. As soon as he queues you when you're withered, he actually will consume that and he'll grant it the rest of that percentage as movement speed. So if you have a 60% slow still left on you or a 50% slow, if he accuses you, he will gain that as movement speed for like a second or two. Um, the thing is, this adds a little more utility to him. Um, makes it so he's not as uncounterable. You know, whenever he cues, you still can run away, um, which I think is a very, very nice effect. And also, to, like, just just adding a, a new movement mechanic in there. That way, he is the people that I guess he necessarily would be uh, kited by. He can kite them a little bit, just in a different way, with with the, gaining that movement speed. If if that makes any sense. Going on to his E ability, which is known as Spirit Fire, I just changed the name to Shuremic Monolith. Very similar ability, yet again, but slightly different effect. So, and you'll see with with Nas, I really didn't need to change. This isn't like a super hard rework. The biggest rework uh, to him was his passive. Everything else is very similar. I just try, kind of changed some things up just to make it fit better in the kit. Um, so same effect as before, it has a AoE um, magic damage ability that also shreds percentage armor. Now, uh, if placed on top of a turret, whether the turret is standing still or destroyed, it will gain a monolith beacon, which will be a little icon that will pop above the turret. Uh, this will actually increase the AoE, the AoE range of the spirit fire effect, as well as uh, granting bonus movement speed for X amount of seconds for Nas. So this is actually a great tool for two different things. One, it's very, very good for defending turrets. So if you're getting dove, you can throw this down on a turret and obviously they'll be dealt damage as well as having the armor shred, but also will grant you movement speed as well as diving. You can throw this down on a turret. Yes, it's going to do damage to them, but you're going to gain movement speeds. That way you can kite, kind of kite around, maybe kill them, deal some damage and get out. Um, I think this makes the ability, this makes the ability a little more, uh, or it makes the ability less bland, less plain. I feel like it was just kind of one of those abilities that's like, okay, he does AP damage, and it's a giant AoE, and it, you know, it shreds armor. It just has a lot of effects to it. Um, I think adding the movement speed and kind of the little effect of it being down on turrets just creates a new atmosphere for it. And also, it just makes it very hard to dive. He was kind of hard to dive anyways. Um, 
in a different way but now it's since we're kind of reverting everything and changing it this is a I think a more healthier way of saying that hey if you dive me I'm, I'm just gonna have a bunch of movement speed and it's gonna be really hard to kill me okay now moving on to his final ability which is his ultimate I actually kept the same name fury of the sands I thought it was a I thought it was an okay name uh, same of same ability like I said before slightly different uh, effects on it so the first thing is removing the damage aoe on the ultimate now I don't know about you guys I don't play a lot of Nasus. I play against it a lot, but I didn't re even realize that the ability does damage. For whatever reason, I did I did not think it did damage, uh, which is I think kind of strange. I don't I don't know why it would do AOE damage, but we got rid of that. That's no longer on there. He now gains bonus HP, uh, which is determined by how many shards he has collected. Now I don't know the ratio of what it would be. Um, I feel like if I said anything, everyone's gonna you know you know rip me apart in the comments for it. Um, but he would have a percentage of his health, you know, be determined by the shards that he's collected. So if you have three shards compared to eight, you're obviously going to have a lot less HP. You guys can give me some ideas on what some healthy um, HP bonuses would be. That would be greatly appreciated. Same effect as before with his bonus auto attack range, as well as the cooldown on his cube. That way you can spam it and have a little bit of a higher, um, you know, extended auto attack range. But now... So he actually used to just gain flat magic resist and flat armor whenever he ulted, which in my opinion is a little ridiculous. You should not be able to click one ability and gain a ton of resistances, um, a la Singe, who is another champion that I'm going to be uh, re reworking in the future. But, so this way, when he actually will gain bonus magic and um, magic resist and armor if standing on top of his E effect. So this actually makes it so... If you fight him on top of this with his ultimate, he's going to be very, very strong. If you fight him away from this ultimate, which is a good sense of saying, hey, I need to kite around this and kite and get out of this area, he's not going to be nearly as strong. And same thing for Nasus. He wants to fight while he's on top of his monolith, um, as opposed to outside of it. So this way it kind of contains his power level in an area. And obviously, like I said, it will extend the range when you throw it down on a turret. So he has a pretty good range to fight around. But for you, the person who's playing against Nasus, you do not want to be anywhere near that area. Um, I think taking away the AoE damage is good. I, I thought it was just kind of pointless to have it on there. Um, having bonus HP based off of his passive, I think it's a little more balanced. Um, hopefully it wouldn't be too OP. We have to, like I said, we have, we have to see it in game before we can make any sort of, um, nope. Before we can make any sort of, um, um, uh, thesis about, or, um, have odds with us about it because I don't really know how strong it would be. Um, also, tower defenses just become a lot stronger. He is very, very hard to dive with his ultimate and his E um, up, which is good and a bad thing. Like I said, it's good for him. Um, it's going to deter you from diving him as much. And also, it's a little bit easier to kite if he does ult and just decide to wither you. You're not going to die instantly. All right, and that is going to conclude my rework of Nasus. Hopefully, you guys can see what I was looking to do with this champion, making him a little more fun and not as broken. Um, if you guys like what I did, please uh, like and subscribe. Let me know if this idea is very good or if it's complete trash in the comments either way. It's awesome. Um, and hopefully I'll see you guys in the next video.